Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hope you all well on this wonderful Monday afternoon at 2.30. Sorry, we're about 18 seconds late. <laughs> we like to do 30 seconds. <laughs> we like to do it on time. We do a countdown here. Four, mm. three, two, one, boom. That's it with the timing. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we were just trying to sort out the sound. Hopefully the sound is good, that you can hear us. Um, and we just trust the Lord that He's going to bless you today. Amen. And uh, we are excited about what the Lord is showing us, where He's leading us, and what God is doing. We had an awesome time this weekend, um, especially yesterday with the divine encounter. We had such a powerful time. So I'm just, I'm just thankful for, for the brothers all over and sisters all over South Africa, yeah, um, the world, uh, all over, U United Arab Emirates, UK, France, all over the place. So we just... We just greet you, Azar Krista. Hallelujah. Shalom. 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 Today is going to be an interesting one. We've got, yeah. lots, of, we've got lots of places to go. We've got some steak. We've got some steak. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, so we've got so much to share. And uh, this is something that's been on my heart for many years. Since I got that vision, or that vision, not my vision, but the vision that Rick Joyner released in 1993, which is now 27 years ago. Sure. Um, That's a while, eh? It's a while. Yeah. Right? Just think where you were and what you were doing 27 years ago. Um, oh, wow. The yeah. Lord released this vision, which is, to me, one of the key visions for the church. How's it? Hallelujah. Moi no, moi no. Hallelujah. <laughs> Welcome. The church of Moino is with us. We welcome you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Um, 27 years ago, this word was released. And I've never forgotten this word. I put it out on our, what we call the golden pack on, on yeah. email. That used to be my job. So if you're on, those <laughs> things out if you, back in uh, the day. If you're on our email, you would have received this or going to receive this, yeah. this, this word. Um, but you need to take that word and eat it and then revisit and understand where we are. So we're going to look at that word. Together with yeah. some other words the Lord gave us, um, but we've got to look at important, uh, the important strategic questions. Yeah. Is basically um, where are we as the church right now? Hallelujah! Yeah. How's it, Ned? Shalom, Shalom. Park. Hallelujah. We welcome you. Um, yeah, just tell us where you're from when you join us, and if you're joining us for the first time, it'll be awesome. But we know a number of you are tracking with us over the 21 days of victory, and now we are. Today is basically number seven of position for harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah from your gates. Praise <laughs> the Lord. My gates. God's gates. Hallelujah. Tony, Amen. welcome. Hallelujah. So the question, the, the, we need to answer some and get the answers to some strategic questions because yeah. the Lord is positioning us. Now, how do you get positioned if you don't know where you are? You don't know where the Lord is. You don't know where the church is. There is a prophetic timeline. So we're going to look at the prophetic timeline. Yeah. We're going to answer questions like, where are we as the church right now? Um, on God's prophetic calendar. How can we plan if we don't know where we are? So yeah. we've got to know who we are, where we are, and where we're going in order to, 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 to you know, track our path. Because the Lord is leading us, but He's giving us a guideline. And He's saying, this is, these are the signposts along the road so you know that you're on the track. Because if you missed the track, how do you know if you missed it? How do you know if you're doing the, the perfect will of God? Yeah. But the, the most important question of all is what is Jesus doing in the church? Okay? Never mind the world. There's yeah. the world and there's the church. The kingdom of God is coming in and through the church. And the kingdom of God is much bigger than the church. Welcome Cape Town. How's it Mariana? Welcome. Hallelujah. So the kingdom of God is bigger than the church, but the kingdom of God church has to come into the kingdom the church of the, uh, the kingdom comes through the uh, the kingdom comes through the church so we need to understand as the church prophetically where are we in the calendar okay because a lot of people are talking hello Cindy hallelujah all the way from Holland oh, oh, that's, that's from awesome. Holland my Dutch is not so good <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So we've got Olin in the house. That's Yay. wonderful. Hallelujah. That's Mrs. Omar. That is awesome. Well, wow. bless you. Hallelujah. Janine from Cape Town and Nina from Machalisburg. So we are, we are going to look at where is the church right now? Because we need to know where are we 
so that we know where we're going and what is the plan for the future. So this is really, really, really powerful. So um, the other questions we're going to be asking is, is where is the Lord taking the church? And the most important question of all, like I said, is what is Jesus doing with the church? So I'm going to read you um, and I'm going to comment as I go along. Miriam and I are going to comment on the word and um, the word, this is now, I'm going to read the word to you uh, called the War and Glory Vision, which Rick Joyner got in 1993, which is a vision I've been tracking with. A lot of people will get visions. They will re- forget the vision, but I'll remember the vision. I know, I'm guilty of that one. <laughs> you know, so remember, you will vision, remember better than I do. It's because it's like, it, it kind of embeds within me because it's like yeah. a milestone, the Lord. So, so many people have been around me that get prophetic words and I've remembered those visions when they've already forgotten them. And this is one of them. I, I don't know if Rick Joyner, obviously, I don't say he's forgotten a word, but he's got a lot of words. But this is the one of the mm-hmm. words that I felt is one of the most important words for the body of Christ to know. Okay. Yeah. So God has got a good plan for the church. All right. He's got a wonderful plan for the church. Okay. So, but this is part of the plan. This is where we are. This is from 93 to now. And uh, so I'm just going to read. And um, and I'm just going to read from the top here and, and from the beginning. And, and it was August 1993. So that's basically 27 years ago. He got this vision. Okay, so listen to this vision, Amazing. this prophetic word for the church. And now this church, he's talking about the church of Jesus Christ worldwide. I don't care what denomination, mm-hmm. whether it's Baptist or Catholic, whatever you would uh, uh, say is the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ. Okay, we're not saying everybody in the church is saved or born again. Because obviously you, you need to be born again to get into the church. All right. It was represented as an island in the middle of a sea. Okay. So so the whole church. Can you picture this now? The sea. All right. And in the middle of the sea, which is the world, is the church. And there were many different types of building all over this island. So you mm-hmm. can imagine the church. And you've got all these different buildings. Okay. Over the island. Of which I understood to represent a different denomination of movement. So you've got all these different types of architecture, okay? All right, and um, you can imagine, just start to picture this. These buildings seem to clash with each other architecturally as there were very old ones next to very modern ones. So they're all different kinds of designs. Some churches and denominations have been going hundreds of years or thousands of years. Well, not thousands, but at least hundreds of years. There was a war going, listen to this. Now, this is, this is something you need to see. There was a war going on between many of the buildings and most of them looked like bombed out shells okay so these denominations were fighting one another okay people were still living in the buildings but most were starving and wounded now when it talks about starving we're talking about people in the church starving we're not talking about physically starving we're talking about spiritually starving they do not have the food they they're going and they're getting uh, empty basically empty speeches on Sunday, they're not getting equipped, they're not getting empowered, and they're actually starving. Okay, but the buildings were fighting each other. Obviously, they were fighting each other over the sheep yeah, yeah. because, you know, uh, it's like sheep stealing. If you go from one church to another, this pastor or this priest gets upset because you're leaving your church now. You're not allowed to leave your church. And they think, actually, a lot of leaders think it's their people and yeah. it's their church. Yeah, The church doesn't belong to... We've got, we've got, we've got churches. That, none of these churches belong to me or Miriam at all. We'd never think of that because they belong to Jesus. The sheep belong to Jesus. The church belongs to Jesus, and we are just uh, stewards in the vineyard. Uh, you understand? Mm-hmm. We just here to serve you. <laughs> That's what we're doing here today. We are here to serve you, the Word of God, and to help you. Okay? So there was a war going on amongst these uh, these ch- these churches. And then then he he talks about two controlling spirits. Now these two controlling spirits. Um, there were two dark spirits over the island directing the war. Okay, so these principalities, demonic forces, were controlling the war on the church over the church. There, one was named jealousy, and the other one na- it was name was fear. Okay, so you've got jealousy. People are jealous over other people's churches growing, and then the other one is fear. So you know what happens when we fear fear each other? Mm-hmm. We will attack. Or we'll run away. So yeah. basically, if you're f- afraid of someone, you'll either attack them or run away from them. I then su- saw two powerful and frightening spirits rising over the sea. Okay? Yeah. These became storms. One was rage and the other one was lawlessness. Okay, so so those are end time principalities. Rage, you can see right across the world, the rage. If you say something nowadays that is a uh, 
contradicts what someone else believes. They don't just say, let's have a discussion. No. They don't just argue. They attack you personally. And they actually, some of them would actually get physical and actually attack you yeah. and get so angry with you because your, your view is different to their view. Okay. So this is a rage that's going across the earth. You're seeing all the, the war, not just the wars. We're talking about people getting into rage, Ra road rage in South Africa, even on the roads, they're beat, ba beating each other up. So this, God showed him 27 years ago. And, 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 and the other one is lawlessness. Basically, people just doing their own thing, not listening to the law of the country and they're just doing whatever they want mm -hmm. and they were and this lawlessness is also talking about coming against the law the greatest law of the law of love okay hallelujah hello lilani hallelujah lilani i think you you you're living in east london i think okay hallelujah welcome east london no, no <laughs> i think so just tell us where you're from hallelujah john john uk so we got uk hallelujah, hallelujah. we got the uk how's it john and jacqueline Saw them yesterday, saw you guys yesterday, and we got Holland, and we got South Africa. I don't know any other countries the in the house. Let us know. We welcome you all. We, we love to see you guys. Hallelujah. They were stirring. Okay, so this these two principalities were stirring up the sea and, and causing great waves to crash onto the island. So rage and lawlessness were causing waves to crash onto the island. And soon, okay, soon these storms became so large that they seemed even more threatening to the island than the war. So, picture this. You've got the church fighting each other. Yeah. On the outside of the church are these waves coming against the church. Now, we have experienced that for the last 27 years. Okay? Yeah. But the, the whole thing has changed. We've geared up a lot. Okay? All right. Uh, the war is geared up. And, uh, in fact, what's happening is the waves has gone ballistic right now. We're going to see where we are today in this prophetic timeline so you know where we are yeah. you know where we're going so it's not doom and gloom it's very positive yeah, no, it so is. we're going to share a very positive word with you today okay yeah. but it does get a bit hectic in the middle <laughs> no but it's good when, when you have these visions yeah. it gives you something to hold on to and, and yeah. you know okay the this storm is, is here yeah but we hold on to the word and the promise because yes. we, when what we it, get through it will look like this yeah and that to me is exciting and you also understand what the lord is doing when you yeah. don't understand say what is going on what on earth is and going that's on? often why he gives prophetic word yeah. and dreams and that is so that you have that word to hold on to yeah you can hold on to and that you word. won't be shaken and, and moved by what is going on around you but you just be no this is what God said. But that's why we need to hear what the prophets are saying. But the true prophetic words, because we know there's a false prophetic out there. Yeah. And basically, those are the I call the Babylon prophets, it's babies, blessings, and bucks. All right. And a lot of divination thrown in between. Mm -hmm. But we need to know, hear the true word of the Lord, because yeah. the Lord is speaking. Yeah. The Lord hasn't, uh, you know, basically done away with his prophets. And there are people that, and, and God is raising up all of us, all of you to hear God's voice. Yeah. But not everyone that prophesies is a prophet. Hallelujah. So uh, we yeah. just pray, we, we just, we just praise the Lord for that. Okay. So the, so what happens is soon these storms became so large that they seemed even more threatening to the island than the war. Okay. So I felt that the people in the city, now that's the church had been warned about these storms. Okay, now we have been warned. Okay, we know the storms are coming. All right, and several apparent watchmen, which are the prophets, were trying to do this, and the watchmen are saying, look, the, look at the storms that are coming. But no one would listen to them. Listen to that. The church wouldn't listen to the warnings. I mean, I don't know. You could have been used as a watchman in your church. You come and tell them there's a storm coming, and they just shrug you off. They, they just say, ah, what are you talking about? Don't be so negative. Yeah, you know, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah. All right. So they just push you aside and they don't listen to what the watchmen have been saying. So this, this is very important also not just for the uh, interse um, prophets, but also the intercessors who, Absolutely. Are, who are watchmen. And they should work together anyway. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> now they, they need to work together. Yeah. But So the people only, de listen to this, the people only, the church, only debated and argued about whether the watchmen should be trusted. Oh, how do we see that today? Oh, this oh, is false. Man. This is yeah, Kundalini. No. This is that. This is that. It's like, all right. So, so the, now the watchmen are. So the big debate was actually, uh, should we trust these people or not? Well, like you've said before, there's entire ministries that are built around breaking other ministries down. That yeah. is, that is they build the entire, entire ministry on judging other ministries. Yeah. So, so to have nothing sad. to do with those ministries that are becoming obstacles and stumbling blocks. Okay, because mm -hmm. you don't want to be a, st a stumbling block because uh, oh. there's a serious judgment on a stumbling yeah. block. So, the, so they were, this was remarkable because anyone who just just looked up could see the storms for themselves. Somebody says there's no sound. Oh my goodness, how is that possible? 
Can it, you all is it, it, okay, hear? Okay, there must be sound. Is it sound? Does anyone? Is is it sound? Just tell us is it sound or not because that's a very serious. Just checking. Otherwise, uh, otherwise yeah, they would have said they would have said something earlier. Okay, there's no sound. Just tell us if you sound. Thumbs up. Sound. 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 I just wanted to find out if it's if it's Roanne, or is it everyone that can't hear anything? I can check here on mine. How quickly, just switch it on. This is not mine. Yeah, this sound. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, okay. Okay, all right. So it's your it's your uh, device. It's no just sound. Just making sure. Just uh, switch it on, switch it on and off, or play with your sound. Okay, all right. I was just going to say, oh my word. So for so long, no sound. Okay, all right. I'm sure you guys would have told us this. Okay, sounds good. Uh, lots of yeses. Okay. Okay. okay, all right. So okay, so, so this was remarkable because anyone just looked up could see the storms. These wars had left so many wounded that the hospitals were fast becoming the largest buildings on the island. So hospitals are churches that look after the, the churches wounded. The people that have been wounded in other churches, they started to grow because all the wounded people went to the hospitals. The hospitals were movements and denominations that had given themselves to healing the wounded. Okay, so we've seen entire denominations yeah. grow and movements grow just on healing, mm -hmm. not just the sick, but healing the brokenhearted. You know, you go to church, you want to yeah. get attacked, you go to church. I mean, I know that Miriam was highly wounded in the church where she grew up and it was a lot of wounding that she went through. So ultimately, God had to heal her from those wounds. Mm -hmm. and, and, and ultimately, you could have been in a church that wounded you and God, God wants to bring you into a place of healing. Yeah. But don't worry, the, the, there's hope in this whole picture mm. here for the church so that you know what the future of the church is. Okay, so as they grew, um, as they grew, the warring factions in the church, can you imagine, warring factions, this, I mean, this is terrible, had no respect for, for them as being a place where even their own wounded were being cared for. Okay, so now the factions in the church did have no respect that the, these places were where their own wounded were taken care of, but instead were more resolved to destroy them than the, than the other buildings. So the hospitals became the targets of the church. So you got churches fighting churches, and, and they were targeting happening. the hospitals because the hospitals were growing. Obviously, uh, jealousy, you know, these yeah, guys yeah. are getting more numbers. Maybe they're getting our tithes and offerings. You know, it's about money at, yeah. at the end of the day. Money and influence and fame. All right, so... Um, all right, so, so Father, we just thank you for the sound is sorted. Everyone will be able to hear in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, so we just, just guys, yeah. just pray over the sound, over the internet, in Jesus' name. Devil, you're not stopping the sound. And I just say, the corona is not in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> While we at it. Uh, the Lord told me, corona is not in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. It's Amen. not going to affect us. We're not going to get coronavirus. In Jesus' name, we're protected in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. All right, as the, so as the war continued, even those who were not badly wounded, had the appearance of phantoms. Phantoms. That means they're like, like spirits, like ghosts. As they became grotesquely, de grotesquely deformed from the starvation and disease. So people were just basically empty. And they had no power, okay, against the attack. Anytime a building received a supply of food which would attract people, it would become a target. Amazing. So if a church got food, that means spiritual food and blessing, yeah. Other, yeah. other churches would attack and say, oh no, look at them. Let's attack them. And then they attack the other church. What? How? Through through slander and the leaders attacking them, sending out emails. You know how yeah. they do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I could not comprehend how even a war could be so cruel. And this was the church. Now, this was three years before Rick Joyner... And, or maybe two years before Rick Joyner started to get the final quest, where he saw the Civil War. Okay, so this ties in. You need to read the final quest. You yeah, can get that's... it on our website in the in the shop area. Go and get the final quest and read it, because this ties in exactly with the final quest. This uh, this was given to him about two years before, or a year before the final quest revelation of the Civil War in the church. Yeah. So what he was witnessing is a Civil War in the church, the Christians fighting one another. Okay? All right. In the midst of the battle... Men were, st were still trying to add to their buildings or start new ones. But it was futile. Whenever one building would start to rise a little higher than the others, or any time a new building was started, a new church, it would become the main target of all the other buildings. So you start a church in a city. I've seen this happen in Orange Farm. I've seen it in Edenville. You, oh you, you start a church. The other churches just attack. Boom. It would become the main target of all the other churches, the buildings. Yeah. And it became... It, it, it would it would quickly be reduced to rubble. <laughs> so they were very effective at destroying God's church. Yeah. The church 
was destroying God's church. I mean, it's horrendous. This is a civil war. Well, that's why it's a civil All right. war. Yeah. That's why a lot of people on the outside that are not Christians today, they're looking at the church and they're saying, we, 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 we don't, we don't want, want part we, of that. Yeah. Because basically yeah. our label for, for the people outside the church today, they're basically just saying that we're hypocrites. Okay, so they're saying you bunch of hypocrites yeah, because yeah. look, you don't love one another, you point fingers at each other, you destroy one another, and and, and, yeah. and so many people have been wounded in the church. Yeah. But there's good news because Jesus is going to come and take over the church. Yeah. Okay, so watch this. All right, so we we need to apologize as the church to the world, and yeah, we, we need should. to say we're sorry for for being such a bad example because we don't love each other. Yeah. All right, because so many people have been hurt in the church that they left the church and they say, that's the church. Who wants anything to do with the church? When you go to church and you get attacked and wounded and abused. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Well, and you don't need that. No. So, so what happens is, uh, it's a miracle that many people have stayed in the church. Yeah. Because they know it's God's answer, but the church is not basically behaving themselves. We're not walking in love. Yeah. And then, okay, so I was shown, if, um, listen to this. So the churches were being uh, reduced to rubble, the new ones that is. And I, I, was, I was then shown many powerful leaders, leaders in the church, who were conducting this war. They were leading this war. I'm talking about, Rick Joyner, he's actually talking about spiritual leaders, okay? All of them had the same word on their foreheads. Treachery, okay? I was surprised that anyone would follow someone with that written on them. But they did. They followed. Was a good other word for treachery? Just clarify that word. Because I looked it well, up. Right tre the well, treachery, um, that's betrayal. Yeah. All right. Treachery, I mean, that's like, that's that's betrayal. Yeah. Okay. I was reminded of 2 Corinthians 11, 20. For, he says here, for you bear with anyone who enslaves you if he devours you. If he takes advantage of you and if he exalts himself, if he hits you in the face. So basically, you are tolerating abuse in the church. Sure. And you are following a leader with his name, treachery. And, you don't, and, and many people don't even understand what the, how they've been deceived. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so if that's the case where you are, get out of that church immediately. Yeah. Leave it. Don't leave the church of Jesus Christ. You just leave that building. Yeah. You get out of it. Okay. Now, there is, there's good news. There's a remnant. Okay. However, there were people who appeared as lights in almost every building. So every building, every church building or denomination, there were some lights in this. These lights in almost, there were lights in every building, in almost every building. These lights refused to take part in the fighting, but spent their time trying to repair the buildings or nurse the wounded. So unfortunately, they were trying to repair the building, but that was like pointless. It's better to actually focus not on the building, but on the, on the wounded. Even though it was impossible to keep up with the damage or the wounded, they did not stop trying. It was also apparent that, the, that, that each of these lights, okay, these are the people that are walking in love in the church, mm -hmm. so they sprinkled all over the church worldwide, had the power to heal wounds. Sure. And that power was increasing as they worked. So as you work amongst those that are broken, God's anointing on you is increasing you to heal the brokenhearted. God's called us to heal the broken hearted. Miriam and I are called to heal the broken hearted because our hearts have been broken while we've been in the church. Yeah. Okay. I've been in the church for 35 years. Miriam has been in the church most of her life. And, years, and, and so. most of the wounds that we got was in the church. Yeah. Okay. But God had to teach us how to forgive mm -hmm. and to love our enemies, even though they were Christians. Okay. We, God says we must bless our enemies. We must pray for those who spitefully use us. Yeah. We must forgive them and put those sins in the sea of forgetfulness and that we can love our enemies, even yeah. those that cause us the deepest pain. Okay. All right. So, so these, they, were, they came as lights. Okay. So, and, 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 and uh, these lights uh, were getting greater and greater anointing. Okay. Those who were healed became lights. Okay. So basically those that you are ministering to as lights mm. also become lights. Okay, just like those that had healed them. Okay, it was obvious that these individuals were committed to healing the wounded, were now able to do more than the hospitals. Sure. Okay, so there are ministries set up for hospitals. Now what's happening is now it, it can't be operated through ministries, but it happened through individuals, individuals who were looking to help the wounded because of the ruthless, 
the ruthlessness of the tax on the hospitals. In other words, the hospitals was an organized system, and the, and the, but the healers were going invisible because they, they weren't an organization. Yeah. So the organizations were a target because you could see them. This ministry does this, attack it. But yeah. now people are actually crawling among the wounded, going into different places, meeting different people, and healing other congregations wounded, and they don't have a name or an organization. So God has been doing that for the last 27 years. Understanding this, the hospitals, listen to this, so the hospitals dispersed their people as healing teams, which spread out across the island, the church, and moved into, other, uh, into many of the other buildings. So they started to send healing teams into the church. Okay, to heal the wounded. And remember, the wounded were because they were shooting each other. It's a civil war, okay? All right. Nice. There were also small camps around the perimeter of the island, and some of these were involved in the war between the buildings and seemed intent on trying to destroy all the buildings so that they can bring people into their camps. Oh, my word. So there are churches that are trying to destroy all the churches so that they can bring their people, all those people, into their camps. I mean, that's, that's hectic. The leaders of these camps had the same word on their heads, treachery. Okay? And there were, there were a few of these camps which were not involved in the war, and they too appeared as lights. Okay. These were also growing in authority. So anyone in the church now that has decided to actually walk in love and not start to slander and backbite and send out emails criticizing all the body of Christ, mm. those are lights in the body of Christ. They are there. They are, they are active now. And I believe many of you sitting listening are, yeah. are some of those lights. That's why you're listening, because God has connected us, because God's joining the lights. Joining the dots. Yeah. Joining the dots. Okay. Yeah. These were the, growing with authority, but, uh, but it was different authority than the healing powers that the others had. They had authority over events. Now listen to this. This is amazing, okay? There were, there were different groups of people who were getting authority over events. We're, we're talking about world events. They were praying to stop small battles and to keep small storms away, and it was happening as they prayed. So it's those that are not involved in the war. Yeah. That are lights. Walking together. And growing in authority. These yeah. are the ones that have growing authority over events. Even the actual battle. Yeah. yeah. So is the, the, this, is a, this is a major that big... Is, that is just... Now, the, these are the small little house churches all over the world. That's who these people are. So you must know who is this. This is, this is them. This is those that are walking together. Yeah. Might be three people here, five people here, ten people here. All these little house churches yeah. that are all insignificant. God is saying you've got authority over events. Yeah. That's why the devil attacks you so much. Yeah. All right. Listen to this. The two spirits over the city. Remember the two spirits over the city, over the church. The two principalities ruling over the church right now. Okay. Is fear and jealousy. So, you know, remember the Bible says, first bind the strong man. Mm -hmm. Those are the two strong men over the house of God. Did you know that? Fear and, 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 and jealousy. Yeah. Okay. So, um, all right. So, how's it, William? Where are you from, William? <laughs> Thank you for the blessings. Uh, okay. So, I felt that these intercessory groups, they're small groups. I mean, even like we've got the Eagles group and we've got different, there's different groups all on the WhatsApps. We're actually close to having the authority to stop the major battles and big storms, which were obviously the source of agitation of these large spirits. All right, so God has given us authority, and that authority yeah. is in the small groups mm. because the authority is based on humility and truth, walking in truth, and love. Yeah. Okay? Those three things. Humility, truth, and love. That's what gives you authority, and obviously from there, there's a fourth one, unity. The unified group, whether it's five or ten, walking together yeah. in the yeah. mandate of God mm -hmm. to heal the sick and uh, heal the uh, broken hearted. All right, so now we come on to the part which, which is called the tragedy. Okay, the tragedy is there were multitudes of boats and ships all around the island that were waiting to enter the city as soon as the fighting stopped. All right, so you got the church and you got all these ships with people on it. Okay, which is the last. And many of these boats were full of refugees from other wars and many were wounded. There, there were also ships bearing kings, presidents, and those who appeared wealthy and prosperous. These were all afraid of the storms. They were afraid of the storms on earth right now. Okay, but they could not enter the city, the city, which is the, the church, church, because of the fighting. Now, this is the harvest. This is revival. So revi we, what do... Okay, you, why does revival tarry? 
Revival tarries because the church is in a mess. Yeah. The church is fighting one another and we've gone from city to city in South Africa and wherever we go, it's the same problem with the church. They're not yeah. willing to work together. They're in jealousy and fear and they're very independent as well and yeah. they don't want to work together. All right. I'm talking about all the seven cities. Okay. We haven't been to all seven cities, but at least Cape Town, PE, George, uh, and also Edenvale and other cities. Yeah. And I believe it's all over the world. You, you, the church doesn't want to work together. Mm. Okay. So, I, I can honestly say I've never seen a city church completely working together. I don't know if any of you have. <laughs> please let us know. I'd love to visit. <laughs> yeah, well, there'd be revival but then. There okay. would be revival, but uh, that's what I'm saying. It's, I don't think we have seen that. It's coming. <laughs> it's I've got coming, good news. It's coming, but not yeah. in the way you think. Okay, no. let's just carry on with this, this, this prophetic word. Now, there's, so, there, so basically, the harvest is out, and he says, their groans and screams was so loud, I was surprised that no one in the city would hear them. The, the harvest, the unsaved, their groans and screams are so loud, that, and, but no one in the city is hearing them. And no one even seemed aware that they were out there because they were so in, focused on the church and the battle about so in the battle territory. They're so themselves okay? that they can't hear the cries of the lost. This is so sad. Okay. It's this is the, sad. this is very, very sad. Now, now, now enters Jesus. Wisdom. Okay. Hallelujah. You can hear now. Hallelujah. Praise the, Praise the Lord. Then I saw the Lord standing and watching. He was so glorious that I wondered why I had not seen him before. or Why anyone in the city did not stop to worship him. Sure. To my amazement, no one was able to see him. No one was able to see him. I then looked into the eyes of some of the people and they were all so bloodshot. The eyes were full of blood that I was surprised that they could see anything. All right. And in the, in the final quest, I think he talks about it's the blood of Abel. Mm. Remember Cain, mm. the hatred towards his brother. It's mm. the blood of Abel in the eyes. The bloodshot is the blood of Abel in the eyes of Cain. And so when we are so upset and angry with our brother our eyes are full of blood and it's the blood of Abel which cries out from the earth so because of the blood in the eyes they could not see Jesus and then I wondered why the Lord did not stop the fighting and seemed content just to watch as if he had understood my thoughts he turned and said to me all right so don't you worry I wonder about that as well why does the Lord just allow the church to attack itself because basically that's what cancer is is when the cancer comes into your body, the body attacks it's itself. itself yeah. Okay? And so Jesus is standing on the outside of the island, on the edge of the island, watching this whole thing happen. Yeah. Yeah. And then he says, Jesus says, now listen carefully what he says. He says, this, my ch this is my church. These were the houses men tried to build me. Uh, sorry. These were the houses men tried to build for me. Do you understand? Yeah. The entire church on the, in the earth today was man trying to build a house for God. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Man's design, man's architecture, and it just, just looked like a mess. Mm -hmm. And there's a war going on. Okay. I knocked on the door of each one, but they would not open to me. I would have brought peace because I will only dwell in the city of peace so remember revival is where god dwells among yeah, us yeah, and yeah. jesus says i cannot dwell in the church in the earth because there's no peace then he turned and indicated the people in the ship saying indicated to the people sorry there's a typo here saying if i allowed all of these people that's the harvest he pointed to the people in the ships that are crying out millions of people billions of people actually if I allowed these people to come to the city now, they would have just been used in the war. They would just be used in the war. When their cries, now listen to this, they would be used in the war. Now the scripture I've got for that is a very serious scripture. And this is the scripture he gave to the Pharisees. He says in Matthew 23, 15, he says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, hypocrites. For you travel land and sea to win one proselyte, one convert. And when he is one, Okay, so you go and you find one person in another church, you bring them to your church, and you, when you, 
And then when he is one, and you get someone saved, you make him twice as much of a son of hell as you yourself. This is so serious. You make him a son of hell twice as much as what you are yourself. What is a son of hell? A son of hell is a person that you train in the ways of hell, which is to fight their brothers, to point fingers, and think they're better than everyone else. That's a son of hell. Mm. You train them in slander, backbiting, and coming against any other church that's different to you. And so God doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to love one another, no matter what denomination you're from. We need to love one another mm. and do not worship the building. We worship the king. Yeah. Okay. The problem is the focus has been on the building, the, which is the organizational church, organized church. And he told me 20 years ago, come out of Babylon. Come out of it. I said, what? Babylon is the organized church. This whole thing. He showed me this is what it is. He showed me that that is, he said, you must come out of it. Mm. Because lest you partake of his sins and a place come upon you. Okay, so we've got to come out of that organized church because God is going to do something very special to this uh, building that man has made. You will watch what is going to happen now. Then he looked at me. Then he said, when their cries, that is, that is the cries of the harvest, become louder than the war. Okay, now this is a timeline. He says, when? When what? When the cries of the of the of the, uh, the lost become louder than the war, I will build a place for them. I will build a place for them. Then he looked at me with great earnestness and then said, very powerful statement, I allowed this to happen so that it would never happen again. So Jesus in his wisdom has allowed this to happen. This is the civil war in the church. He's allowed the civil and the war in the church to happen so that it would never happen again. It is hard to convey the power of the statement, but imparted to me, it, it imparted to me a deep understanding that, that he allowed this conflict to continue out of profound wisdom. He then said, until you understand this, what? That he did it out of, uh, so that it wouldn't happen again. You cannot understand what I'm about to do. Okay. We're still getting to the place, where are we as a church? So we've seen all this happen. So where are we? Now watch this. When the cries of those in the boats became louder than the conflict in the city, the Lord gave a command and the sea was released. The sea is the nations. Yeah. Okay? That is the nations. The storms in the nations, the sea, was going to be released against the church. Okay? Listen to this. Great Tidal waves arose and began to sweep across the island until they covered the buildings. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. This is where we are right now. We've seen the first wave cover the buildings. Yeah. All the churches across the world, most of the churches have been shut down by the governments. Yeah. Shut down. There is no Sunday services allowed in South Africa and across the world. Most places cannot have a Sunday service. And all the Christians are nodding and saying, this has to happen. Not realizing what's going on. That is the wave. And what is the wave called? Coronavirus, which is not. That's what it is. And God told us to dismantle this thing because he said it's not from him. But he allowed it. And that wave is a demonic attack against the church. So that wave has shut down the Sunday services. But God has allowed it because He wants to rebuild the church. Yeah. He wants to restore the church and He wants to let all the harvest in. This is very important to understand where we are right now. So He released the sea and a great tidal waves arose and began to sweep across the island until they covered the building. So the spirits that were storms joined the spirits over the island and they all grew to almost double their previous size. So the principalities and powers grew in influence and authority. And God allowed them to come over the island. So God has allowed this to come over the island. He's allowed it to come over the church of Jesus Christ. The spirits that were... Okay, so then the island complete... Listen, the island, the church, completely disappeared under the darkness of the spirits and the raging sea. Okay. So I don't know if we've reached this point, but we're about to reach this point because God has already warned through our brother Sadhu, who's a prophet in India, that there's something much, much worse than coronavirus coming in about nine months' time. The beginning of next year, something's going to come, 
and you're talking about boils and things like that. Another thing. That's yeah, bad. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So it's much, much worse. So if you think it's bad now, it's going to get worse. The next wave is already going to come. The other day, uh, I, 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 no, yesterday I was listening to James Gall. The Lord of two weeks ago showed him the, uh, the, the, the manual of the dragon and, yeah. the, and the steps. And, the, and, the, and, and I think step number five was fear, worldwide yeah, fear. Step. Step, step, step number six was worldwide pandemic. Step number seven is worldwide economic collapse. Never mind eight, nine, and 10, 11, 12. Yeah. Obviously, no. at the end game is the mark of the beast. He's got an entire plan, but the Lord's not saying we must accept the plan of the dragon. We must come against it. Mm -hmm. So what happens is God is training us while we're underwater, while we are not allowed to even go gather in house churches. Yeah, yeah. It's once again, and I've been saying this a lot, is the enemy trying to accelerate the time. Yeah. Because he knows time is short yeah. and, we, and we know time is short. But that doesn't mean he has the right to make it even shorter. We have authority. We need to redeem the time, take the time that we have and... Push him and back. And push him back. Push it back. We yeah. must push, push back. Yeah. We must push. For what sake must we do it? Not for our sake, for the lost. Yeah. Because he's trying to take people to hell. Well, yeah. He's trying to kill what, people. What's and so take heartbreaking them out. to me is the, the, the cries mm. of, the of the lost, lost could not be heard by the church because yes. they are so, so busy trying busy to build the empires. Each other. Yeah. And that to me is so sad. Yeah. And, and Jesus said all those years ago already. The harvest is plentiful. Yeah. And there, there is so much harvest then already and how much more now. Exactly. And we cannot even hear their cries unless. We're so busy fighting our brother. That, that to me is For market share and yeah. sheep and sheep stealing and all those kind of nonsense. Yeah. So watch this. Okay. Yeah. The Lord did not move as this was happening. These very important statements, okay? So I'm going to basically uh, put a copy out there on WhatsApp so yeah, you can have a whole copy of this out. word. I'll send it out with the notes, this word, so you can study it, share it, and discern where we are. I'll, I'll show you where we are today. I knew that my only protection was to stand as close to Him as possible. That is exactly where we are right now. The first wave has hit us. That's exactly... The Lord has been saying that for the lot. I mean, since we've started the lives, it's uh, the, the 21 days of victory, and then and then we carried on. He says, come look at me, climb the mountain, come closer, look away from the world, look at my eyes, behold my face. It's over and over and over the same thing. So when I studied this word again, because I, I Warren gave it to me back in 2007, and I know it, but now I, now I know it more. <laughs> is when I read that again, I thought this is exactly. What the Lord has been saying. What he's been saying right now in this season, right now. 27 years ago, he gave it to our brother Rick Joyner. It's just amazing. And now he says, and now think how, how, how applicable this word is right now. I knew that my only protection was to stand as close to Jesus as possible. People, that is what you need to do right now. Don't worry about the mark of the beast, this or that, or whatever. Get close to Jesus. Get close to Jesus. Seek the Lord. And if you don't know Jesus, you need to give your heart to Jesus today. You need The Bible says that you cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you're born again. Yeah. And we need to confess our sins and we need to be born again. So look, if you don't know how to be born again, contact us. We can pray with you and you can be born again. Just because you think you're a Christian, you went to church, doesn't mean you're a Christian. You mm -hmm. need to be born again. You need to repent from your sins and turn to Jesus. It's not too late to be saved because... Only those who are born again will enter the kingdom of God. Okay, so this is so important because God loves the world. He loves you no matter what sin you're involved. He loves you. You don't have to get your life right. All he has to say is, is turn to me and I will save you. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord today will be saved. So if you don't know Jesus, it's now time to turn. And if, you're not, if you don't know Jesus we, as, a, as a Christian and as a believer, I want to apologize to you and say I'm very, very sorry for the bad example that the church has been to you for the last 30 40 50 60 yeah. 70 80 whatever 90 years i just want to say i'm very sorry for being as a christian leader i want to yeah. apologize for being a bad example miriam and i yeah. want to say we are sorry yeah. for being yeah. a bad example yeah. because the true church is supposed to love one another yeah. and not fight with one another mm. so we just want to repent to you and say we're very sorry. And if you're a believer and a leader, you need to also start to repent to the unbelievers and yeah. say, we have been a bad example. Yeah. We have not been a good example. Yeah. So he carries on and he says, 
I could not see anything but him. So that's why. Don't worry. You're trying to find out where we are in the book of Revelation. It doesn't matter. We are yeah. supposed to seek his face because only when you seek his face will you understand. And here is the answer. Many of you have been praying for the answer. Here's the answer. This is where we are. As I looked at his face, I could see both hurt and resolve. The Lord was deeply hurt over the pain in the church, over the wounding in the, in the, in the world. But he was resolved because he knew this is the only way it's going to come right. It's the only way it's going to come right. Hallelujah. Bongeka, hallelujah. So Germany. Long. So we've got Let's Germany see. in the house. Hallelujah. So we've got Germany, Holland, UK, South Africa, and Namibia. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. So we go on to the next part. And this is the house. All right. The house of the Lord is built. Okay. Slowly the storms died down and the tides receded. So we're going to get, go through storms. In the next year, two years, we're going to go through storms. Eventually these storms died. Not just one storm. Corona is the first storm. I was, yeah, I was thinking about it today and I was actually talking to Dominique about it. Is the, uh, the waves of labor. You yeah. know, in the beginning you just yeah, it's get like the like labor pains. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the, now the, it comes. Pretend labor. This is what this is. It is just a little... A little wave. Labor pain. And it's 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 so interesting to watch yep, the response it. of the people and the church. That's it. Yeah. Um, Just to see the response, what's going on in the what's church. What's going on and, and yeah. But this means. is this is generally the labor pain that's yeah. going on. Okay. The individuals now listen to the slow these storms die down and the tides recede. The tide means the, 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 the tide is going back out again. The individuals who were the lights in the buildings emerged. The individuals who were lights in the buildings. Now, those are people that are part of churches right now. Emerged and remained standing where the buildings had once been. I just want to focus on that once been bit. All right. That basically means Structures. that every organized church that you see today sure. is going to be annihilated by the storms. Not that one building statement. stood. The structure was washed away by the storm. Yeah. That is like the man-made structures that we've made. God is going to demolish. Yeah, yeah. He cannot Let that build, sink in. He cannot build his church on a man-made structure. No, he's not. Oh yes, I said this morning. I was talking to uh, to Neil about this, and I said the Lord is not coming to do renovations in the church. He's not coming to do some repairs. He's coming to actually. He's allowing the storms to completely flatten the structure. Sure. Not the people, the structure. Yeah, yeah. The buildings. All right, and so what we've seen with the closure, even the sports events, everything. So it's basically closing down the structure. Many churches will not open again because the cash flow is gone, the money is gone. They can't pay for the million rand or million dollar a month bonds or ten million dollar a month bonds. They are gone because there's no cash flow to keep the beast afloat. This thing consumes a lot of money when you're running a shopping mall and no one can shop anymore in your church, which is now a shopping mall. All right, I remember what Jesus did with the shopping mall in the temple. He came with a whip and he overturned the tables. And I believe that. What does it look like when Jesus overturns the table in the church today? Yeah. And I believe this is what we're seeing right now. We're seeing that he's just basically shut the cash flow down. And we have to reassess. And God is saying, uh, he's saying, I'm allowing this because it's going to be for the best. Okay, so you've got to hold on to Jesus. Don't hold on to your horses. Hold on to Jesus because he knows exactly what he's doing. That was his he knows exactly this, what he's doing. Vision. Yeah, this is the protection in this vision was holding on to Jesus. He's looking at him. Yeah. He's actually looking at him. Okay. So basically he says, my only protection all right, stand as close to was him. to stand as close to him as possible. Okay. So the buildings will collapse. Okay. So just think of this. Many of you are in different organized churches. Just think of those churches being removed over the next two years. Three years. I don't know how long it's going to take until the until the, the how many ways? until it's uh, until. But yeah. remember, he's allowing it to destroy it. Yeah, I know. He's allowing it. But this is just the first wave. He allowed. He the Lord is allowing yeah. the waves to come and destroy the organized church. Then the Lord, who had been on the edge of the island, moved to the saint. Ah, you see, the Lord had been on the edge of the island. So can you imagine? You've got the island, the church, and Jesus is standing on the outside of the island. All this time. Jesus is on the outside looking in. When the church has been destroyed, I'm talking about the buildings, not the people, the buildings. The only thing that will be left standing are the lights. 
Everyone else is swept away. All the people that were actually treacherous, and they're gone into the nations. They're gone into the world. They're gone. They're gone into darkness. You understand? Then the Lord who had been on the edge of the island moved to the center and said, Now I will build my house. And what I like this, Hallelujah. He will build it. He will build it. He will build it. He's going to build this it. It's not done by the hands of man. This no. is done by him. He's going to build that, the church. I, I just jumped when I read that again two days ago. I finished chewing on this. And I was so excited. I says, now I will build. Hallelujah. House. And we, the church has been trying to build a structure. Themselves. Themselves. He will build himself a house where he can dwell. Well, what does it, me, that's just, what does it say in Psalm 127? Those, okay, unless the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Unless the God, Lord uh, guards the city, the watchmen awake in vain. Oh, so the watchmen, that, that scripture applies exactly for that right now. Let just get it, just get it and, 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 and uh, post it there. On the, that is such an amazing scripture. So this is good news because Jesus is going to build his church. Who's excited? Hallelujah. I'm so excited. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, Roanne. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Fire. Hallelujah. Just yeah. receive his fire right where you are it's in Jesus' name. Psalm 127, verse 1 and read 2. Read it. Yeah, read it. <laughs> so, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. And then it carries on with it. Okay. It's waiting for you to rise up early and sit up late. But that... Psalm 127, verse 1. I'll copy it into the yep. live stream. All right. So now the pillars were... Okay. So now what happens? Jesus says, I will build my house. Now it gets exciting. So so if it's been a bit negative right now, don't get negative. As it, Louise. Praise it the Lord. It gets better. It gets better. <laughs> Hallelujah. The best news is coming. And all of the those who were lights started turning to the Lord. So the lights turned to the Lord. Remember, the Lord's in the middle of the island right now. It's completely dark across the world. The church has effectively disappeared. The world's going to say, where's the church gone? But suddenly the lights, the, the remnant, the remnant. The lights came on. The lights come on <laughs> and the lights turn to Jesus. Okay, yeah. they turn to the Lord in the middle of the church. The chief cornerstone and all the stones are looking at Jesus. And all these lights start turning to the Lord. And they turn and they became even brighter. And each group. As changed into a living pillar right where they stood. So God is going to raise up pillars. What are the pillars going to be? There it tells you. A group. A group. Which is a house church. Each house church that stands in this time is going to be a pillar. And he changed, the, it changed into a living pillar right where they stood. Soon it became obvious that these pillars were the framework of a building which would almost cover the entire island. That is amazing. Now that's how he builds his church. So what he's doing right now is that you and I need to be positioned and get your house in order. Get the, the altar in your house going. That's what the Lord's saying. Prepare yourself. This prepare. Is the prepare. Prepare what? Ready. Prepare your prayer your altar. altar. Build your family prayer altar and start a house church. Yeah. Because it's these yeah. small house churches that God is going to raise up as pillars yeah. in his structure. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not part of a denomination. But these house churches are going to just come up and God is going to build his structure. Watch this. The pillars, remember what the pillars are, are groups of Christians that are lights together. All right. God made them into pillars. Now, now the, the, the scripture that came to mind immediately when I, I mentioned that this morning, I was talking to, to Neil about this. Um, he, he, he basically in Revelation, I think three, he says those that overcome will become pillars in his house. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I'm looking at the word pillar as you All talk. right. So it's Revelation 3, 12. Okay, you can post this one as well. This is a promise. Okay. So I'm going to read a little bit before that. And he says here, um, and he's talking about, be careful of people that say they're Jews and are not. We got we even got that today. People are, that, are, that are saying they're Jews and they're not Jews. Okay. He says yeah, because you have, verse 10. Let's go to verse 10. 3, 10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will keep you from the hour of trial which will come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. And then he says, He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God 
and he shall go out no more. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. There's I the city. The city is the church. Yeah. The new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from God, which I'll write on him my new name. Now remember, God's going to write his new name on you. So when you've got his new name, there's no place for the mark of the beast. You need to be marked with God so you won't take the mark of the beast, which is the 666, which is the number of mammon, the number of man, where you can't buy and sell without that thing because you're worshipping mammon, because you're worried about your money. If you're worried about your ma money today, you're going to be taking the mark of the beast tomorrow. Yeah. You understand? We have to trust God. We need to repent for worrying about finances, for worrying about income. You've got to understand, the Lord is the one who supplies our needs. Hallelujah. So listen to this. This is amazing. The pillars were different colors, shapes, and sizes. It was, so it wasn't like a uniform shape. It was hard to understand how all of these being so different would work as a single framework. God is establishing a framework. However, excuse me, the Lord seemed very pleased with each one, and they did eventually all fit together. Isn't that amazing? That the Lord is going to build a worldwide church himself. <laughs> so he's going to allow the waves to demolish the church. And then he's going to build it. That's in short. The question is, where are we right now? We are under the first wave. Yeah. And the church has been shut down. Yeah. Okay? All right? The organized church has been shut down. What I mean is no Sunday service. Now, there are churches that only function on Sunday services. That's their main function. And if you shut down their Sunday service, it shut down the church. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. ha most home sales are ineffective without having the Sunday church. And they're not able to operate. And God says, not my structure. If it cannot stand now, I didn't build it. Do you understand? So what God has been telling me for 20 years is to build the church according to the pattern in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Make disciples. And according to what they're doing in China. Because yeah. there... That church is growing under great persecution. Okay, so so the okay so now they all f eventually uh, f did fit together. Now listen to this. Huh, uh, this is getting positive now. This is phenomenal. It gets better. The, the people. <laughs> the next heading is the people come. Yeah. Then the ships and boats all started landing on the island. Hallelujah! That in one word is revival. Yeah. I'm gonna change that heading. I'm gonna say revival. Hallelujah. I'm going to say this is revival. This is revival. Revival is coming. Revival is coming when? When God has built his house. Yeah. Because he said, I will build a place for you. Those that are crying, I'm going to build a place. So he allows the old system to be demolished. He builds the real church. And basically the people come to the island now. Oh, yeah, yeah they come. They're coming onto the island. This is the harvest. A billion souls, two billion souls coming into the church. There were multitudes of people. Each ship or boat was from a different country or race of people. Soon I began to think that it, even as large as it was, there was too many people for the building. Now remember, this is God's building. Man's building is now gone. God has built a new building. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord looked at me and said very sternly. So the Lord didn't like that thought. There's not enough place for everyone. He said, we will build as many rooms as we need. No one will be turned away. Woo! Hallelujah. How awesome is that? He said, we will build as many rooms as needed. No one will be turned away. The Lord, a long time ago, I said, what's the pattern for your house? He says, it's a house. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And this is his house. He's building and his rooms. And in, the, in our ministry, we've got different rooms. And God says, build these rooms. Build the children's room, the women's room, the, the lion, lioness's room. Build the room, the room for the orphans, the widows. All these rooms. Because this is a room. And that, that room is a part of the massive room of all the children in, in the children's room in, 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 in the church of Jesus Christ on earth right now. So God is building his house with the rooms. And yeah. he said, build as many rooms. This was said so sternly that I resolved to never again consider turning people away as an option. <laughs> you see, the buildings, uh, long ago in, in 1998, when I saw revival coming to uh, Orange Farm Township, and we got, say, 500,000 people in Orange Farm, and the Lord showed me that clearly that when revival comes, because that's when we started passing and praying for revival in 1998, 
And the Lord showed me that revival, when revival comes, you cannot build a building big enough or fast enough. Therefore, you have to put the people in the houses and you have to build a house church system, a way that we can actually do church in houses and homes. Yeah. And that's where we're going, okay? So that for 20 years, we've been developing and, and working away and asking God, how do we do house church? How do we do house church in the West? And it's been so difficult because life is so easy and it's nice to go to be these big fancy buildings with all the smoke and mirrors and you have your two minute noodles. You come out of there highly motivated with a sermonette for the Christianette with like KFC, you know, Kentucky Fried Church. You go in there, you come, you feel blessed, but you have no equipment on and you don't have any wall. You, you're not training you're not wall. You can't wall. cast out demons, but you have a feel good mm -hmm. church. So that church is going to melt. That church is melted. Right now it's melted. It's like yep, chocolate. Yep. It just melts in the heat. Or well, more mm. like plastic. Because at least you can eat the chocolate. <laughs> chocolate plastic that's nice. melted, you can do nothing with it. Okay? So the church yeah. is melted. Yeah. All right? The church yeah. is melted. The and church as we know is melted. Wine, wine right? Skin. So the new wine skin has that's to come right. before the new wine. Yeah. So this is the new wine. The new wine skin is the house church. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's why the Lord said, we need to prepare you so that you can prepare your house for the Lord because God's going to send many people to your homes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Many people are coming. When we were talking to somebody at our table and I saw the wineskins. Yes. And how the new one passed by some of the old wineskins. Yes. Yeah. And now it was very sad to see that, but I'm reminded of it now. Revival is that there's been, not there's coming been to churches everyone. and structures that have, I mean, pastors have built with their entire lives for many, many years. And I saw how the spirit of revival would just bypass. Well, it's already, the spirit of revival has been released. Yeah. It's invisible. But what's coming it's much, is, much, is, much. is going to go, yeah. God, no, it's going to destroy that thing. Yeah. That structure is going to be destroyed. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. By the waves. Yeah. That's the tsunami it wave. Many people to, have yeah. seen tsunami waves coming. This is the tsunami. I had a dream a few nights ago, I remember, with the waves that yeah. were coming. Coming. And I saw in my dream, I won't elaborate too much now, but I saw I was taken outside and I could see the sea and there was waves of water coming. And I, when I looked at it, I could see that these were tsunami kind of waves. This was mm. massive. But the people didn't discern. They just said, oh, but that's just that's just the ocean. That's a very that's important just, word. Um, yeah, we will still get on to that. We need to one. talk about that word. We need to talk about that at another point. But I'm right. reminded of it now with the waves. So these, it's, this is the yeah. tsunami wave that just doesn't stop. It might look low, but actually it doesn't stop coming. It's In other words, a tsunami yeah. wave can be like 500, 500 or 50 kilometers deep. So it's a wave. It might not be that high. But when but it, it comes, just it just keeps coming. coming, coming You've got and millions coming. and millions of tons moving in and just destroying everything in its path. Yes. And, and basically, that's what's stuff. happened right yeah. now. And that's happening with the church. It's happening with the economy. Yeah. And so what happens is the church is underwater. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But while we're underwater, what do we do? We hold on to Jesus. Keep your arms up. In the Keep your arms up with the H-O-P, our power, and you surrender. Hallelujah. You got it? Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. So yeah. now, watch this. Okay, so Chris, yeah, had a, 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 a yeah. similar dream. All right, so now, then yeah. people looked at me. Okay, so now, the Lord looked at me and says, we will build as many rooms as we need. Okay, so now, this was said so sternly that I resolved never to again consider turning people away as an option. I love how that shows the heart of the Father. Yeah, it's like, boom, done, done. If there is a room that is needed, then there's a room. We'll build we another room on. on. We're going to build a room. <laughs> because no one will be turned away from his that. church. I love that's it. Beautiful. Yeah, that's that is just, awesome. So that's the father's heart. That. Yeah. yeah, hallelujah. I also pointed out the biggest problem before. Listen to this. I love this one. I also pointed out the biggest problem before, all right, was how to get people to come to the buildings. Now the big problem was what to do with all of the people. And that's why I keep yeah. telling you guys, you got to get ready because yeah. there's going to be people coming to the building. What building? Yeah. You are the building. Not, not Jesus didn't build this big coliseum in Jerusalem and say, yes, the new Jerusalem. Now we all got to go and sit in this place that can seat five million people. No, the building that he's building is you yeah, and me, the living you. stones. So in other words, you've got to be ready to disciple yeah. people. You've got to be ready to cast out demons. You've got to be ready to heal the sick. Are you ready? Are you are you revival ready? Meaning, are you ready for the harvest? Are you ready, ready to, for some fish? Are you ready for a lot of fish? It's coming your way yeah. because he's saying, yeah. get ready. Because how can he entrust you yeah. with five hundred fish when you're not take care? You're not taking care of one fish. Mm. I'm talking properly. You understand? We've got to get trained and equipped. That's why we say, get in the school of ministry, yeah. go through the material, and yeah. get properly, yeah. consistently trained, so that when the fish come, 
you know what to do with them exactly. and you're not sitting there not knowing what do I do with all these fish and you're losing them yeah. you understand when harvest comes you don't have tra- time right now to start to train how to do the harvesting no. you should have already been trained <laughs> especially you, you guys have. because you're already saved you very, understand very your job points. is to train the harvest to, to get the rest of the harvest That's right. you got it yeah now, so, so now basically yeah. the problem is not going to be the numbers. The problem is going to be what to do with all of the people. Hallelujah. What a problem to have if you're trained. It's a terrible problem to have if you're not trained. All right. Yeah. Now the next heading you're going to enjoy, the next section is the cemetery. This is, <laughs> don't get negative now, people. This Hold is, on. This is very good. This is very exciting and very good. So This is very this is amazing this yeah. because this is the whole message of the of, of the of, of discipleship everything in one it's just amazing when each ship arrived the people on it were led straight to the lord <laughs> they weren't straight led to the head pastor or the bishop and meet the bishop baptized and kiss his ring and all that nonsense they yeah, were led no. straight to the lord jesus i love that that one i can just focus on he and, and jesus looked into the eyes of each one and he said if you trust me you will die for me you got it if you trust me you will die for me that's what it means to be a disciple that's that's what i always say sure the, the definition of friendship this greater love is no one that is the known one who would lay down his life for his friend we must become friends of god <laughs> And I, I gave this message i gave this message to children many years ago i, I would say most probably about 18 years ago, I gave this message to children, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm talking children, like average age eight. I gave this message to them about, what I'm about to read to you, I gave this message to them. We had an outpouring like I've never experienced before, and since then, I've never felt the presence of God so strong in a room. And the presence of God, everyone's weeping, the children were weeping. But I gave them this message. The message that I'm reading to you, not the whole church one, just this part on the, I gave them the cemetery. That's okay. I, 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 yeah. I gave it yeah. to them. All right, in about 2002, at a camp. We had a camp. We had about... 25 children there there's about 50 of us on a camp and i gave this message to the children and i i said to the children do you trust the lord enough to die for him and the children i said come forward and i asked all the children to come and die for jesus all right so i don't i, I don't do the mickey mouse thing with the children i tell them the w- real word of god so i love to minister to children but i tell them straight they're soldiers i don't mess around with yeah. the children hallelujah yeah, i've seen the greatest are, manifestations yeah. on the children and we're starting to see a supernatural manifestation on our children, our yeah. own children, right? And every night they're coming with dreams. David had another dream today, all right, about Jesus anointing him. And and, and, and we had a Zoom meeting on Saturday, on Sunday. Yeah. And the children yesterday was amazing. God's giving the visions. Even got a testimony from our, our sister in uh, France about God showing your children last night. We weren't even yeah. on the Zoom meeting. He, we, his son is 10. He saw a massive angel yeah. in the house. So it's like it's, it's God is moving on the children. So we just want to we, we, we want to we want to invite any of you before yeah. we forget. Okay, just share this video. Start sharing this video right now. And and also, in, are we inviting you to bring your children on Sundays at two o'clock South African time? Join us for the Sunday service. Yeah. I'm starting with ministering to the children, and it's so exciting. I'm so excited because God is touching those children like this. Yeah. Bring your children. Yeah. Bring them on. God's going to touch them. God's going to strengthen them. God's going to equip them. God's going to give them visions. Them the they're going to see into yeah. the spiritual realm. In, uh, I'm not playing games with children. Seriously, they're going to get equipped. Yeah. When I start ministering <laughs> to children, I, you know, I'm I've, not I've your... seen some of it. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> and so what happens is the children are going to get ser- seriously yeah. equipped for this time because God says they're and part of the army now. And there's no junior Holy Spirit. There's no children's Holy Spirit. But there's like, no, like we've been saying, the, the Lord has put something on the children now to come against the yes. Antichrist. He wouldn't yeah. put that on them unless it was necessary. And, and we need to train them in, in that anointing. To, yeah. As the, parents and as the, the, the disciples, we have this responsibility yeah. to, to show them. Yeah. All right. So yeah. now listen to this. He said, Jesus says, if you trust me, you will die for me. He says that to you right now. Do you trust him enough to die for Jesus right now? Just Just think about it. And when one said, so you, if you wanna, if you wanna just type it there, if you wanna, if you're gonna answer that, don't answer it lightly. When one said, "I will die for you," so if you're ready to die for Jesus today, die for him. He didn't say live for me, die for me. He says, "My friends are the ones that lay my life down, your life down for me." 
You understand? That's what discipleship is about. Unfortunately, we haven't raised up disciples in the church because we don't actually teach people to die, to self anymore. We talk about seven steps of success. How to avoid the pain in life. It's like this. It's, 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 I mean, can I read it? Look yeah, down 23. Yeah, that's the, the, um, the, true, the heading here is true cost of discipleship. And then Jesus said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? Sure. But what strikes me about this is, and I've been watching, like I said yesterday on the call as well, we've been watching that series, The Chosen. Um, and what really gets to me is when Jesus finds another one of his soon-to-be disciples and all he says is, follow me. He just said, that's amazing. He just looked, I mean, they portray it so well. You yeah. really have to watch it. But he looks them in the eye and he says, follow me. Yes. And you can see almost the interaction from sure. one soul to the other. The, the counting of the cost. When he says, follow me, that, for some, that, that, like for me, it meant leave your country, leave your language, leave your people, leave she your had to leave her whole family. Leave she lost her family, family to follow me. I had to explain this to David recently. And it was such a beautiful thing to be able to explain to him that I could say, yes, I will follow you, even though it cost me that, but it is worth it. Sure. And he could see that. It was it was really special. But when Jesus says, follow me, that, that, those two words are so loaded yeah. <laughs> because there is a cost in the follow. <laughs> but You will die for me if you follow me. That's, a, that's what I'm saying is it's the dying. That's the dying. And the dying part. is painful. Let me tell you, it's painful. Okay. To get rejected by your family, to lose your family, like I've had to lose my family. Miriam's had to lose her family. And um, it's very painful. But she had to lose her family because she had to obey the Lord. And the Lord told her what to do. Okay. So ultimately, I just praise the Lord for the pain that I've had to go through. Yeah. yeah. And Miriam as well. Yeah. Because ultimately, he's worth dying for. Yeah, no. If he's worth living over for, over he's again. worth dying for. Absolutely. And we got to teach disciples about dying Every to self. Day. If we don't teach them about the cross, this is, this they're is, not disciples. This is what we must teach the children. Jesus mm. is worth dying Yeah, for. he's worth dying. If they can see no. that, they will gladly. Well, this is what happened. I'm, I'm going back like, I think it's 17, 18 years. I spoke to these children. There's about 20 of these children. Around about 20 children. I'm not sure how many children. And the average age was about eight. And I'm talking to them there, and there were children from Orange Farm, all different races there. And I said to them right now, Jesus says, will you die? And I asked them to come, and I said, and listen to this. Those that, he said, will die for you. This is, this is what's coming for you. He says, immediately, he thrust his sword right through his heart, which caused real pain. So if you say you will die for the Lord, he takes his yeah. sword, and he thrusts it through your heart. And I said to the children, I said, the Lord is standing here with a sword. If you want to die for him, step into the sword. And when they stepped into the sword, the power of God came down. And those children were weeping. They were weeping on the floor. I'm talking about five-year-olds walking around prophesying over adults. The, the place was full with the glory of God. The adults were crying. Every single person in the whole building, there was about 50 of us, was just crying and weeping. And this went on for hours, hours. The biggest encounter that I've ever had with the Lord is when I released this message sure. to the children. Sure. So we just want to say thank you, Lord, that you are releasing the message right now to us and to the children. And then to those who tried to avoid the sword, it was obviously even more painful. To those who, who relaxed, it will, would not seem to hurt as much. So basically, you need to die quietly and quickly. I call it DQQ. -Q. All right, <laughs> just type it in there. Dominique. Dominique has got. She knows D that one. DQ. That's quiet. Die quietly and quickly. Okay. DQQ. Die quietly and quickly. Hallelujah. You got it. Die quietly and quickly right now in Jesus' name. We thank you that this video will be blessed. And it will not stop right now. Amen. Hallelujah. There we go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Oh, wow. Welcome, I'm, India. Hyderabad. Martama. Huh? Oh. India. Welcome, India. Praise wow. the Lord. Hallelujah. 
We praise you, Lord. Die quietly and quickly in India, in Ireland, in Germany, in the UK, in South Africa, Namibia, all these nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you in India. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we also in lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? What's in it? Mathama. 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 We all sing lockdown. So we bless you now, Mathama. We bless you. We pray for salvation over you. Hallelujah, Mathama. Yes. Hallelujah. Do you know Jesus? If you know Jesus, just say, I love Jesus. Okay, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we've got India on you. I love it. Praise the Lord. God's bringing nations. So you must join us on Sundays. Hallelujah. Maybe, uh, maybe At 2 o'clock. Yeah, Domin Dominic, uh, Dominic, you can send him a message directly, directly connecting with the, with the ministry there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yeah, there is a brother. Praise the Lord, brother. I don't know, you, your brother, you I can't see. Th sister. He or she is saying to you, brother. Yeah, yeah, I'm your brother. <laughs> support. We support you in prayer. We bless you with fire in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. And Matthew chapter 6. Go and read Matthew 6. There's all the support you'll ever need. Hallelujah. And the prayers from your brothers and sisters. All right. Now, to those who relaxed, it, it didn't seem to hurt as much. And, and they were taken to a cemetery with the words on the cemetery. It was called obscurity. It's not a place that you want to go to when you want fame and a name. Come to the church, get famous, become a musician, stand on there and uh, release an album after a year of being saved and you become even more famous now. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. He said, obscurity is over the gate. That means you're not, you're hidden. No one sees who you are. You got it? I felt compelled to follow them. Those who had been stabbed, all right, stabbed, were checked to see that they were really dead before they were buried. It's very important that you are properly dead before you're buried. Like properly. All right? Some clung to life for as long as possible. They didn't want to die to self. They just said, no, nah, I'm going to... And were laid off to the one side. Quickly, those who were buried began to rise as lights. All right? Just as like they had survived the storm. Just like those. Uh, those that had survived the storm. So in other words, there are lights that are pre-storm, that went through the storm. And then those that are coming, uh, that are getting saved, have to die quietly and quickly and when they rise up they will be as bright as the ones that led them to the lord yeah. hallelujah or the ones that received them and, and <laughs> trained them about being disciples i noticed that they were not staying in their tombs the same length of time some of them arose before those who were clinging to life were even buried so in other words you determine how quickly you're going to die hallelujah thank you jesus yeah. yes that's a john unless exactly. a grain of wheat dies that's it abides it. alone but if it dies it'll bear much fruit much, that's much. the resurrection yeah. but you first got to have a good death before you have a good resurrection that's the seed bed yeah <laughs> Woo, hallelujah so hallelujah the the waves that are coming over the church some would call the great tribulation some would even call it the great tribulation i'm not saying it is but it's going to be uh a, let's call it a big one it's going to be a tribulation that's coming to the church like i've been saying it's going to be great <laughs> yeah it's going to be great <laughs> hallelujah yeah, there we go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so listen to this. I noticed that they were not saying, okay, when I first looked at the cemetery, it looked like a dreadful place. <laughs> and I did not think that it, 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 it fit at all uh, in, in this, this beautiful, glorious island. As I left the cemetery, I turned to look at it. He turned to look at the cemetery and looked beautiful. <laughs> the cemetery even looked good in Hallelujah on the island. I could not figure out what was different. When one of the workers said to me knowingly, the cemetery has not changed. You have. You see, when you don't see through the eyes of Jesus, everything looks dark. But when you see through the eyes of Jesus, you understand this cemetery is a glorious, beautiful place. It's a place where Christians die to self. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You got it? I then looked at the building and it was even more glorious than I, I had remembered. I, I, I then looked at the island and felt the same thing. It had become much more beautiful. I remember the scripture. All right, listen to the scripture. Precious in the sight of the Lord, all right, is the death of his godly ones. The worker who was still wor looking at me said, you have not died yet. Uh, sorry, so he was still looking at me. He said, you have not died yet, but were changed just by seeing, being close to those who have. When you die, you will see even more glory. So Rick hadn't even died yet. 93. <laughs> then the, those who were emerging as lights from the cemetery were, e were each being led to their own place in the building. Okay, see, that's the positioning. God's putting them in the building, which would have their, their name on it. Some joined the walls. So there you go. Some can be in the walls. Others joined the pillars. 
and some became windows or doors. You see this building? We are living stones. Hallelujah. Doors, windows, they remain people even after they became part of the building. Those are the living stones. Isn't this amazing? God putting the whole church together. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then the test. Who likes a good test? <laughs> Hallelujah. I return to the Lord's side. Standing in, in, his pre, in His presence. Hallelujah. There's a typo here. was so wonderful I could not imagine why anyone would not be willing to die for it. But many of the people coming from the ships did refuse. So they didn't want to die. They come, they get saved, they don't want to die. These would all back away from him at that request. Many of those went back to the ship. So they went back to the world. Some of which left and some remained in the harbor. A few of the people who refused to die stayed on the island and were allowed to walk about freely on the island in the church. Even enter the house of the Lord. Okay. They seemed to love and bask in the glory too. But they were only reflected what was coming from others. As I was thinking that it was not right for these to be allowed to stay, the Lord said to me, My patience will win many of these. But even those who that never give me their lives, I love, and I'm pleased to let them enjoy my glory. Never turn away those who love my glory. These really did enjoy the house and enjoyed the presence of the Lord that radiated from the house. But they seemed to timid and they retreated when the Lord himself came close to them. I then watched as those who had refused to die for the Lord began to act as if the house was their own. Ooh. And had been built for them. Oh my goodness. I wanted to be angry at their great presumption. But I could not feel anger even though I wanted to. Whoa, here's a warning for anger. I then understood that it was because I was standing so close to the Lord that I could not be mad. You know that you cannot be angry if you stay close to the Lord. This forced me to, to make the decision to stay close to Him or move away so that I could be angry. Okay? So in other words, he had to make a decision. If he was to be angry, he had to step away from the Lord consciously. Or if he was going to stay in love, he was to stay close to the Lord. I was surprised that this was a typical decision. That I would even consider wanting, all right, wanting to move away from the Lord. But it honestly was. Out of fear at what was arising within me, I stepped closer to the Lord. <laughs> Good move. That was wisdom. He immediately reached out and grabbed me as if I was about to fall off a cliff. As I looked behind me, I was astonished to find that I'd been on the very edge of one and I'd taken that step away from the Lord to feel anger. I would have stepped off the cliff. How dangerous is that? Okay? Stay close to Jesus. All right. He then said to me, In this house I can tolerate, I, I can tolerate presumption more than anger. That anger would start the war again. You see, there's an anger that's going to start the war. And we cannot get into anger because it will start the war. I was then overwhelmed with the knowledge that I had not yet made the decision to die for him. So you see, you, if you haven't died for him, you're going to start the war. Mm. And yet made the decision uh, to die for him either. And I had to, I had to, uh, be, I had been uh, presumptuously feeling possessive of both the house and the Lord. When I saw this great evil in my heart, I was appalled and immediately begged the Lord to destroy my evil heart with his sword, uh, with his word. When the Lord pierced my heart, I was surprised with the sword. Uh, when I was surprised to feel so little pain when it seemed to have so, been so hard on others. He then said, "Those who request death die easier." <laughs> so when I read this in ninety, uh, I can't remember. Nine, must probably read this in about ninety-six. I also requested death. Hallelujah. And so when you hear this, you can request death. Mm. You understand? You have to ask the Lord that you want to die for him. And he who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, but on whoever it falls, it will scatter him like dust. I did not remember being carried to the cemetery, but just as if no time at all had passed, I was emerging from it again. Now the glory of everything I saw was unspeakable. I looked at the rock and loved it. I looked at the trees, the sky, the clouds, everything... That, and I could not believe how wonderful they are. We were. I, uh, a sparrow seemed more glorious than any bird I'd ever seen. And I wondered 
at the great treasure that the little bird was and why I had not appreciated him like this before. <laughs> I then looked at the presumptuous people. Not only did I feel no temptation to be angry, I loved them so much, I would have let each one pierce my heart again if it would help them. <laughs> that is amazing. That That's is a, a resurrection. That is a resurrection. That is the love for the church and the love for people. Yeah. I then began to think of how blessed I was to be able to meet them and be with them. Now I actually wanted them to stay and could not even comprehend how I ever attempted to be angry at them. They were much greater treasures than the sparrow. Then the Lord stood next to me, and though I did not think it was possible, He was much more glorious than He was before, and I was able to bear it. He said, this is what Jesus said to him, This is why the death of my people is so precious to me. Those who seek to save their life always lose it. You got it? Those who seek to save their lives will lose it. But those who lose their life for my sake find true life. Now you know true life because you know love. Huh. You don't know true life if you don't know love. I then looked at the house and all of those compo uh, who were composed it. Everything and everyone that I looked at seemed to stir up this great feeling of love and that was more wonderful than anything I could ever be before. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I know. We're over time, way over time, but I can't stop now. No, no, I'm just showing you. Hallelujah. So you, you, I know it's been long, but you can go and listen, come again, listen. You guys that are still sticking with us, I see you still there. I've, I've <laughs> got to finish it. It's a, yeah. it's a few more. Um, it's not too much longer now. I wanted to go back and, and talk to each one, but I did not want to leave the Lord's side, whose presence was even more compelling. Knowing my thoughts... He said, you, never, you need never fear leaving my side because I've made my abode in you and I will be with you wherever you go. Every, sorry, everywhere that you go. As I watched the presumptuous people, they were enjoying all the blessings and even thought of themselves as the reason for the blessings, but they really were not even part of what was being built. Having just been one of them, I also knew how shallow their enjoyment was compared to what it could be. And, I had a, a, and a great compassion came over me for them. As I continued watching all these people, they gradually became thinner in substance. This is, very, this is a warning, right, to those that don't die. They gradually became thinner in substance and until they were just like phantoms, like ghosts. And I had seen in the city that had been destroyed. Again, I thought of the Lord's words. Those who seek to save their lives will lose it. But those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Yeah. Then I looked at the building, which kept getting higher and the higher, and it went, and the more glory it exuded, the further it could be seen. So the right across the world, the, the church could be seen from all over the world. This resulted in even more ships. Now this is revival. So the glory is just filling the house, coming. and people just keep coming, keep coming. Yeah. And the people were coming through the storm. So the storms are continuing, which were still raging, but seemed unable to affect the island. So the so island... they must have grown in the authority to yeah. make... Yeah. Well, that, that wasn't affecting them. It wasn't... Bouncing off of them. Remember in the beginning it yeah. said that if they had that amount of authority, it would Yeah. That's what probably watch, happened. Watch what happens. He explains now. As this result, even more ships and people coming through the storms, which were still raging, but seemed unable to affect the island. As I wondered how... High the building could get. Now remember, he's wondering how big it could get, and it could. Get. The Lord turned to me again, again, and if he was answering my thoughts, said, "There is no limit to how high we can build this, because I am the foundation, and love is the cement." <laughs> Hallelujah! How awesome is this? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yeah, there we go, John. Thanks, John. Don't rush. Awesome. Carry on. Right? There we go. That's excellent. <laughs> Woo, this is That's so exciting. This is, uh, this is our food. This is our food. I mean, I'm just so excited about this. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As I said, we got steak. It takes a while to chew it. Hallelujah. Okay. So, <clears throat> so there's no limit to how high we can build this. Yeah. Sure. Because I'm the foundation and love is the cement. It's, uh, Hallelujah. It's beautiful. Just think of this. I'm just thinking of the Tower of Babel. This is the exact opposite that's, that's the to picture. the Tower of Babel. There's unity and God yeah. is building and they were trying to build the church in man's effort and yeah. God confused their language. Yeah. Hallelujah. This caused me to look at the cement, which was transparent but radiated a great power. I wondered how I had not noticed this before. <laughs> so the cement that holds us together is love. Hallelujah. Woo. 
I wanted out. Okay, so he hadn't noticed it before, and it was so cap obvious and captivating. I then started pondering. All right. How I seem blind to even the greatest wonders of this building until the Lord directed my attention to them. It, it caused me to turn back to the Lord. Okay. I'm just correcting typos here. To the Lord and watch everything to which he gave his attention. So isn't that amazing? So you know what? If you want to have your eyes on the right thing, look at what God is focusing on. Look at what is Jesus looking at right now. What is he looking at? He's looking at the church. He's looking at the lost. Get your eyes yeah. on what he's looking at. He wants you to look at him, and then you exactly. can look through his eyes. Hallelujah. Exactly. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. All right. So it caused me. Okay. So the, the Lord then began looking at the people who now composed the building. Remember living stones now. As I looked at them again, I immediately struck, was struck by the, by the face that. Um, That's facts. Sorry. This is now a type of your facts. Yeah. Facts. That they were more than people. I knew that they were the new creation that had transcended this creation. Oh my goodness. So we are talking about, we are going to be filled with so much glory that we are going to be operating as the new creation. This is what the whole creation is granting for the sons of God to be released upon the earth. And you cannot walk as a son unless you prepare to die for the son. They had bridged the gap between the physical and the spiritual realms. Sure. The gap, sure. the bridge, sure. Sure. were clearly a part of both. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is the new, the new creation. They were unquestionable supernatural, unquestionably, un, they were unquestionably, I think, supernatural. Yeah. Okay, which did not mean that they were more than natural, but far more natural than anything natural I'd ever seen. Well, there's a tongue <laughs> there we go, the tongue twister. You got it. They were more real than anything I'd ever considered real. Yeah. They made everything else seem like a shadow, Amen. and this sense increased as they continued to change. They were getting transformed from glory. This is revival, where we are inhabited by the Holy Spirit, and we start to just, the Holy Spirit flows through us, and we are transformed as we behold Him from yeah. glory to, to glory. glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So basically, there was, they, they seemed more real than anything I'd considered real. They made everything else seem like a shadow, and their sense increased as they continued to change soon the glory that was coming from them could could be seen and felt the feeling that was not like a touch but like an emotion as i walked close enough to this glory it made me feel so good that the only way that i could describe it was wonderful intoxication not one that clouded the mind but illuminated i felt somehow ennobled but um uh, but not okay with not with, not pride. with pride not not with not with pride but with a powerful sense of destiny i also felt the profound security all right as if i in complete harmony with the ground the air and especially the lord and his house the feeling was so good i never wanted to move again <laughs> with the addition of each new boatload of people this is a revival coming in boatloads all right nations tribes and tongues coming in yeah. all right the transformation of those already a part of the building would continue. The glory of the whole building would increase and expand. This made everyone in the building greatly rejoice with the coming of each new group of people. So there was glory. The, the people were rejoicing. Here comes the harvest. Another wave load. Another boat load. Here's another million saved. Another hundred thousand saved. When those who came from the cemetery took their place in the building, those who were already part of the, tried to give the new ones their own glory. Listen to this. They try to give them their own glory. As they did this, the glory radiating from the Lord would increase. <laughs> so as you're imparting the gifts that God's given you unto them, the glory of God is increasing on the Lord, and He would give even more to those who had given the own glory away. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. So the anointing that God's giving you, you give it away. Yeah. Hallelujah. God said increases and, that, that glorifies and it just him. glorifies Him. That, that's amazing. His glory is increasing and the glory on you is increasing. And then you just keep giving it away. Just and give Him like, His glory. It's a rolling yeah. mass action. Yeah. Those who were the most devoted to the sharing would be the ones used to start the next level of the house. So this is level upon level on the house, which kept going higher and higher and oh, higher. Rooms and rooms and Hallelujah. And this, uh, this house is multi-story multi-dimensional house hallelujah i thought of this is the this basically is the glorious church we're looking at the glorious church i thought of our opposite as was to the from the jealousy would have prevailed this, um, in the previous. in, previously in the city i then tried to ponder jealousy to understand it more <laughs> he's trying to understand jealousy 
But it was almost impossible to do because I could no longer feel jealousy. I had a difficult time even understanding what it was. And it seemed as unreal as if I only existed in, a bad, in bad dreams. <laughs> so he couldn't, even, he couldn't even fathom jealousy because he, he was in such glory. The joy of sharing was so great that not doing it seemed incomprehensible. The more glory was shared, the more one received to share. This is so awesome. Such a powerful, powerful end time revelation of where we are in the church. The joy of sharing was so great that I knew that all of us would be spending eternity just seeking others with whom to share the glory. <laughs> so we're sharing the glory. And as I'm sharing the glory, he's embodying more glory. Yeah. As you share this glory, more glory is coming to you right now. Yeah. Ma, uh, Matama, we release the glory of God over you now. Yeah. God wants you to share the glory with everyone on your, your phone, your WhatsApp. Tell them that Lord Jesus loves them. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Whether they're Hindus or Muslims, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Just tell them Jesus loves them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Release the glory that's already upon you. If you born again, you've got the love of Jesus in you. Hallelujah. The joy of sharing was so great that I knew all of us could be spending eternity. Okay, um, I had this strong sense of knowing that the Lord would be creating many new worlds just for us to have new places to share His glory. I then knew that this was why He created the universe with such diversity and why He created it continuing to expand at a rapid pace. Those who touched His glory were touched by a love that, that had to share the glory, which caused them to expand. He had given us this, the universe to share His glory with. He had set in motion a glorious chain reaction that would never stop. There were no limits on time or space, and, he would ne and, and we would need every bit of it. All right, now let's get to the end. We're at the end now. Here's the, here's the exciting part of the end. It says the storms return. All right, so we have all this happening. And the storms are returning. Then suddenly my attention was turned towards the storms that had continued to grow. So that it doesn't just mean... It just got bigger. It just got bigger. Yeah. To my shock, they had grown larger and faster than the house of the Lord. So God's house was going up and the storms were growing, growing even bigger yeah. and faster than the house of the Lord. And were now coming towards the island. So you must know there was a, a, there was a time of quiet... And in the time of quiet, God brought, brought revival and this house grew. It could be in the time that we're going into now. could be the very time we're going into now. When That's revival right. comes, yeah. the house is built. But there's another storm coming. That's yeah. what I've been saying. Yeah, so here yeah, it is. This is it. Yeah, Miriam's saying. The last few we've, weeks, got a, we've got months to go. When things normalize somewhat again, Normal, yeah. it's going to be like, a, like a, sure. a, a window of time that we need to... Really take advantage of and prepare for the well, next wave. Well, this is it. But this is the preparation. Uh, this is now uh, basically cemetery time, dying time, dying harvest time. time, building the house time. All right. <laughs> so now, basically, great waves covered the, covered the island, and the, listen, this glorious building that Jesus built disappeared from my view. When I first read it, I thought, "Oh my goodness!" So now, what? The glorious house that the Lord built disappeared. Even though I was still very close to it, the fury of the storm was beyond comprehension. Now, this could be the Great Tribulation. Okay? Yeah. Now, I know many think they're going to escape and they're going to go in the, in, the, in the rapture. But just in case the rapture doesn't come before the tribulation, remember this. <laughs> All right? Hallelujah. I knew that it was. And if the rapture comes before this, I'm, I, I'm with the Jesus. Way, eh? yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I'll apologize on the way out and say, look, my doctrine <laughs> was wrong. Sorry, on the way up. It's all good. You understand? It's all good. But you got to be ready. you got to be ready. Better to be prepared. you got to be ready. Hallelujah. Ready for Jesus. Hallelujah. So now, but now, uh, basically, the great waves covered the island and the building disappeared from our view. Even though I was still very close to it, the fury of the storm was beyond comprehension, but I felt no fear at all. No fear. I knew that it was because I'd already died to this world. you got to die to this world. And had a life that could never be taken from me. As wonderful as the island had become, I was just happy to die physically so that I would be free to carry the glory of the Lord to the rest of the universe that had so captured my attention. It, would, it, would, it really would have been hard to choose to stay or to go. I just rested and waited. <laughs> so he wasn't even worrying about dying at that point yeah. so the storm is coming you're underwater and you just say well either i breathe underwater it happens. or i go now hallelujah yeah. but he wasn't afraid of dying because he'd already died hallelujah so gradually the storm gradually the storms abated and the building 
then re-emerged. Now, this is the interesting part. Both the buildings and the island were much smaller. So the island had shrunk, it means the church had shrunk, all right, and were much smaller, but even more glorious. Then I noticed that the storms were just offshore and we're returning. Okay, so in the first wave that came, basically the whole building was destroyed. Remember what he said? Then he built his church and revival happened. And now revival had come. The, the revived church and the church had grown was much smaller and but much more glorious. Then I noted the storms were just off the eye. Uh, this happened several times. Listen to this. Several times. Each time the building would emerge would be smaller. Can you imagine? A wave comes, just destroys a lot of the church. That means the people disappear. You must understand. People get washed away from the church. All right. But it became up more glorious. Each time that happened, it would be smaller and be much more glorious. They were wearing themselves. Listen to this. The storms were wearing themselves out on the island. Now, this is very encouraging. In other words, the island, which is the church, is going to wear out the storms of the devil. Soon the storms could only generate small waves that posed no threat of any real damage. That is amazing. Now, now, now that's really, really amazing. Like so in other that. words, the church is going to get so strong that the, 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 the demons and the, the dark forces, the new world order, the antichrist is going to wear itself out against the church. Have you ever heard this preach? And the glory of the house was now beyond any human description. This is in the word of God. The glorious church. Jesus is coming back for a glorious church church without spot and wrinkle. Yep, this is yep, it. Yep, yep. Then the clouds dissipated altogether into the most beautiful sky I'd ever seen. As I gazed into the sky, I began to realize that it was filled with the glory that was being emitted from the house. The whole earth was now filled with the glory of God. As I looked at the house, I was amazed that there was no damage from the storm. Though it was much smaller, even so, the glory now coming from the house was much greater than before. And was reflected by everything. I felt that it was so great that it must already be extending far beyond the earth. <laughs> so people, I mean, you could see it from other wherever else, in, wherever you are in the universe, extending far beyond the earth. Then the vision changed and I was alone with the Lord. All of the great feelings were gone, even the love. He looked at me earnestly and said, The wall is almost over. 93, he said that. It is time to prepare for the storms. And that's what the Lord said to me, prepare an ark. In about 2000, God said, prepare an ark. I told my family, prepare for the ark. And then all hell broke against us. And then I lost my family. Tell my people that no one with his brother's blood on his hands will be used to build my house. Now that thing, I've never forgotten that one. No one with his brother's blood on his sword will be used to build my house. That's why we got to be so careful with our mouths of what we yeah. speak. I was trying hard to listen to these words in order to heed them while still thinking about the great love I'd felt. He, he then said, this was a dream, but it is real. You have known everything that I've shown you in this dream in your heart. Now believe with your heart and my love will be real to you again. This is your quest to know my love. That is our quest. <sighs> then he's got a whole lot of comments, which I'm not going to go into right now. We've done a lot of we've done a lot of the commenting as well on it, but I will I will put it in the notes we'll in the WhatsApp. This. This you will get the whole word in there, okay? I've been chewing on this for a few days in the yeah. last week. Now this word I've been tracking with really for twenty good. years. This word is like stuck in more than twenty. Years. I've been tra tracking with it. And I think when yeah. it's going to happen, and now suddenly, when I saw this thing with the Corona and the shutdown, I thought, this is it. The church is shut down. Yeah. We're there now. Yeah. We are there. So we could be at the point that after coronavirus is now lifted. And people come out, the harvest will come out because the, but the, we will only know when the church is actually uh, uh, demolished. Mm, when the yeah. church is demolished, you know this has happened. Yeah. If it's not demolished, we might need another wave to demolish yeah. it. Those that ca carry on standing, because this is going to be not run by an organization. This is going to be run by Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is coming into the center, he and will we build. will see the harvest coming in. He's going to build. All right. So the harvest is coming. Revival is coming, but yeah. he's waiting for the church to get ready. Okay, so the readiness is dying to self, getting close to Jesus, seeking His face, Look at him. 
uh, training, do your training, equipping, yeah. so that you're ready to, to feed the hungry, to, to help the broken, mm-hmm. and, and to disciple the nations. Equip. Equip. Yeah. The, the na- you got to be equipped yeah. to do the work of the ministry. Okay. So I know this has been a long one. And uh, I just know that this is such an important message that I wanted to do in one se- session yeah. with no, you. It's very and we have been commenting. And I can see you guys are still here. <laughs> Sinead is there. And I know Mike is there. Hallelujah. Michael from the UK and Jacqueline. This is such an important message. Please share this. Get this out to people. They need to know this message. But it's, it's important that we understand where we are. Because a lot of people read the message. They don't understand it. That's why I wanted to comment with it. Yeah. So yeah. they say, where are we now on yeah. the prophetic calendar? of the Lord. And the, so the question is, what is Jesus doing? Jesus yeah. is standing by and he's watching the storm come mm-hmm. and he wants us to come closer to him yeah. because he hasn't yet started building the church. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He's about to step in the middle of the island and toke, take over. <laughs> Tony couldn't stay away. <laughs> he couldn't stay away. Wild horses couldn't keep Tony away. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless you guys. Bless we bless you. you. We thank you for, for, for staying close to the Lord because you guys are the lights out there. Keep yeah. the light shining. Keep your eyes on Jesus. It's we, like torchbearers yeah. like in the, in the so, Well, it's lights. Yeah. Lights all over the place. Yeah. So I this, awesome. every prophet only sees in part. Miriam sees yeah. in part. We see in part. Yeah. Uh, Rick Joyner sees in part. Sardis yeah. sees in part. But we need to put all the parts together. The see together what God is saying. Together. Okay. So yeah. this is what the Lord is saying to you. And I, I, I know this just helps me. because I, I, I just like to know where we are. And this is basically helping me. So God bless you guys. I thought we'd, I'd just love to share that with you. And uh, I'm so glad I could just release that to you. Now it's recorded. And yeah. if anyone's concerned where we are, just say, listen, watch this. Then you'll watch understand this, where we are. Yeah. This is where we are. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Okay, <laughs> don't forget, Corona it's is not in Jesus' name. <laughs> and the back of this thing is broken in Jesus' Amen. name. Hallelujah. Woo-hoo. Shalom, Janine. Shalom. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah.